Hi, and welcome to the Quick Start Guide for the UKIT's Radio, and I'm making this video as much for me as for anyone else, because often I even forget how to use these things, and I have to go back and refer to the manual or to these videos. But, so what we're looking at is the UKIT's HB1B, and I've got it right in front of me, and I will say this is one of the simplest radios you can get, and that's one reason why I like it. There's not a whole lot you can do with it meaning there's not a whole lot of menus and options and deep things within the menus and submenus and all that. So it's fairly simple, and I do like that. Now let's go over the specs really quick first. So what it is, is it, it's five bands QRP transceiver, 40 meters, 30 meters, 20, 17, and 15. And you can listen from 5.9 to 22 megahertz, but you can transmit on the 40, 30, 20, 17, and 15. It is fairly lightweight. It's fairly small. You can kind of see my hands here, you know. Um, it does. Here's some good things about it. Good thing is it has an internal battery inside. So that's a good thing. You don't have to carry much. Um, it only transmits about th up to three watts. Uh, the bad thing, it does not have an antenna tuner inside. So what you may have to do, and this is unless you have a resonant antenna and you want to take your chances with that, I bought an Elecraft T1 antenna tuner, and what I do is I connect it directly, just like that, then I put my, I buy, I get something like a Cobra head right here, as it's affectionately known. I can plug this in and then run two wires, this up, this one on the ground. You can do something like that, that's a good configuration, and you can run a random wire with that. The radio has good and bad, no antenna tuner, but an internal battery, so that means you have to carry an antenna tuner or you have to have a, a resonant antenna, and I think that would be pretty hard to do out in the field. Um, I have a Pico Paddle plugged in right now. It has, first of all, you have to, it has no internal microphone, so you have to have an external mic. So I went out on Amazon, and I got this little speaker that you plug in. I think it's a 3.5 millimeter. Plug it into here, and... You charge this with one of your cell phone mini USB adapter types. Plug this in here, and here's what it sounds like. And that's what it sounds like, or you can use headphones. So getting back to the specs, what we have is 9 to 14 volts. You can power it this way, or the internal battery, which I have inside of there. And you can charge it, and you have to be careful the charge port is down here and the power port is up here so you have to be careful which one you plug it into I've actually made that mistake before okay moving on you can get the manual online I'll have a link in the bottom it uses like I said it uses 9 to 14 volts any tuned antenna can be connected directly or you need an antenna tuner headphones the key in the paddle are when you turn it on, if it will automatically detect if you have a straight key or an iambic key like I have here. So, as it says, you will get an A, da da, if you have an iambic key or an M, da da, two dashes, if you have a straight key. So we should get an A, da da. Well, guess what? See, one of the problems is if you go out in the field and you don't have a speaker or headphones, you'd be screwed. So let's turn it back on. It'll automatically detect I have iambic. And it's telling me, da-da, you have iambic. Now, going over the first button, what we have here is the VFO, the memory, and then the save. So VFO is exactly what you would think. We can use this to... Well, actually, if you notice, it's in memory mode right now. So I clicked on this. I'm in VFO mode. Now I can cycle through. Now I can cycle through my frequencies. And then it has hertz, kilohertz, and 100 kilohertz. So if this is one little flaky thing about this, it's kind of hard to push this button. It doesn't snap like it should. See, I'm trying to click it, click it, click it. You have to hold it down. I'm trying to get it out of that. I'm in VFO. There it is. 
See, now I can change by 100 kilohertz. There's one flaky thing about this radio is it's hard to get it to switch there. Now I can change my frequency at bigger steps and intervals. Now, if we were to go into one way to change frequencies is they have 30 memories and they're already filled out for you. So if you click this, you see mem right there. Notice the number next to it, five, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it jumped up into another band, 10.110. Notice it tells you we're in CW. Now we're in upper sideband. You cannot transmit in upper sideband on this radio. It's, it's CW only. And so that's one way to get down to another band. I usually just pop it into memory and then I go, I go down here. Then I go to VFO mode and change it. Now, speaking of memory, Let's suppose we want to say 7068.05. First of all, I have to come here. I get to my exact frequency, and I hold this button down. Save. Now, 7.0605 is saved in that memory bank. That's how the memory works. So now we know it entirely what that button does. Now, the RIT mode button is the receive increment tuning, and I don't ever use that. It has something to do with receiving and transmitting on different frequencies. That is located here. You see the little minus sign? It's telling you in the instructions, the dash will be displayed to the right of the frequency as shown above. You can turn the knob clockwise, and it raises the frequency. See the little arrow? Or down and you hit it again, I think if you hold it down, it resets it. Okay, holding it down changes the mode. Upper sideband, CW, lower sideband. Upper sideband, hold it down, CW, that's where I want it to be. Now, you can turn attenuation on and off with the ATT button. On, off. It's that simple. I think the little S right there means the SWR. So if you were to transmit, and I don't have an antenna connected to this, if you transmit now, you would get an SWR reading. And that's one way you know when you're tuning if it's right. Now the IF filter is very simple. All it is is minimum and maximum. And all I would recommend here to do is to listen to somebody and listen to some DW, CW or whatever, and just kind of play with it and just get what, whatever you feel is best. Whatever you think you're hearing is best. The gain, of course, is simply the volume. Now, according to the instructions, you can lock your frequency. If you hit the VM save and RIT mode for about one second, now see the little pound sign right there? I cannot change it. Now, I assume that the way to get out of that is the same thing. There. Now I can change it. I find that that would be more useful on a radio that where it's really easy to accidentally change a frequency. All right, according to the instructions, you can transmit in five mentioned bands. You will see a TX when transmitting. The S meter indicate the power output when you're transmitting three bars. It's equivalent to one watt per bar, up to three. So you get one, two, or three, three watts. Now, one of the most cryptic parts of this thing is the menu, the menus that are sitting with, within this one button. Now, uh, there will be a point to where you need a continuous carrier so you can use your and tune your, with your antenna tuner. So the way you would do that is you hold this button down for a couple seconds. S. I. T. So those are three different options. You will let go as soon as you get to the one you want. So you hold this down and you will get an S as one option, an I or a T. Now the T will transmit a continuous carrier and then that's when you would use your antenna tuner to tune and it would tune up at that point. So if I was wanting to tune, I would have my antenna tuner connected. I would click the this button, hold it down, S, 
I T. You then would hit the dot. You hit the dot. It would create a carrier. Now, I didn't want to create a carrier because I don't have an antenna. So I turned it off immediately. And then you would use this to tune. So the T, you just have to remember the SIT is for tune. Okay, let's suppose we wanted to store in memory our CQ, CQ, CQ. The way you would do that is you'd hold this down until you get to the I. S I. Now I can type in CQ and see if it remembers what I do. It's going to record me. Okay, now I hit this button again, and hopefully it recorded me. Now I cannot run what I just recorded because I don't have an antenna, but if you wanted to, you would click duh and it would call CQ. So I just taught you how to record a memory and then hit CQ. Now, if we were to mess up our memory and we wanted to reset everything, here's how I would do it. You would turn it off, you would hold these two buttons, and turn it back on. And now that it's been reset, you notice that we lost our fifth memory that I just said earlier. And it goes back to the defaults, which are pretty good as defaults. So you can mess around with your memory all you want. All you have to do is turn it off and on and hold those down and it will reset back to the factory st settings. Okay, and the last thing is you may want to increase your speed of your CW settings or decrease. And you would do that using the hold this button down S. Now to go faster, to go slower, so that's how you set the speed. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this helped you. I hope this got you up and started in case you forget. This is a quick start guide.